Yeah, there we go. All right, let me get that for Caroline. Georgia's physical features and locations. There we go. Just for you. All right, let me uh, go up here and change the screen a little bit so you can actually see it. Uh, there it is. There we go. That better? Yeah, that's better. So the Appalachian Plateau, we talked about the Blue Ridge. Um, we talked about the uh, Valley and Ridge. And again, even though they're both mountainous, even though they're really in the same area, they are different. They are distinct. Uh, their geographic features are distinct. Uh, the Appalachian Plateau is the smallest of the five regions that make up Georgia. It's in the northwest corner. Um, you're going to learn in just a minute. It takes up all of one county and part of another county. Um, and we sometimes call it the tag because Alabama, oh, let's back up, because Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia all connect at that point. And so it's called the tag region. Um, it's a fairly poor region of Georgia. Very uh, few people live in that area. And again, it's just not very big. It's tiny compared to the others. All righty. Do, do, do. All righty. Now, y'all got to keep up. Here we go. Um, again, two counties, all of Dade County and then part of Walker County are found in the Appalachian Plateau. And I put this picture up here because you can see something very distinct about um, the Appalachian Plateau. This is actually a picture of Cloudland Canyon State Park. And the reason I put this up here is because of these rock formations. You see them? They're all over. Um, that's something that's distinct to the Appalachian Plateau. All right. Got it? Good? Done. The Appalachian Plateau um, used to be a big mining area in Georgia. That was its most important economic activity, and it was coal mining. You might think, I didn't know we had coal in Georgia. We don't anymore. Um, they pretty much stripped Georgia of any coal. Um, and if you are, I'm going to have to climb this ladder here in a minute. Um, if you're familiar with the coal mining that we have in Kentucky and West Virginia, some in Tennessee, um, you, you know that really right through here is America's coal deposit. Uh, Pennsylvania actually has crude oil, or it used to. We pumped it out of the ground too. Um, but Georgia actually had a small vein of coal, and it's since been depleted. Um, there's not a lot, there never has been a lot of agriculture um, taking place in, <clears throat> in the Appalachian Plateau. And as a result, again, you have uh, very little economic activity. Today, you have a uh, couple of, I guess, major towns, um, but not really. Trenton is probably the biggest. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, that's it. Chickamauga is not in the Appalachian Plateau, but it's right next door. And it's probably a little bigger. All right. 
So there was a lot of agriculture. If you farmed, it was basically subsistence farming. What's that? Subsistence farming. Go back to your first grade social studies class. Subsistence farming. No. I like the way you're thinking, but no. All right. How many of your grandparents live in the country? Anybody? How many of your grandparents have a garden? That's subsistence farming. Grandpa isn't picking all that stuff and going down here and selling it, is he? No, y'all are eating it, right? For the most part. Yeah, when it don't die, when he gets enough water on it, right? That's subsistence farming. We're going we're gonna to feed the family with it. We're not worried about selling it. We just want to eat. So they pick it, they eat it, they can it, they put it up and they have it throughout the year. That's subsistence farming. And you see that in the Appalachian Plateau. Our fourth region is called the Piedmont region, and that's where most of us live. I say most of us because some of you live in Wilkinson County. Anybody in here live in Wilco? No? Well, okay then. Um, Wilkinson County is below this black line right here. What did I say this black line was called? Fall line. Okay. So if you live south of the fall line, you don't live in the Piedmont region. Um, it's the middle of the state. Basically, it stretches um, from north of Atlanta to the fall line. And it's where most of the people in Georgia live. Georgia's population's a little bit shy of 11 million, and over um, probably by now a half a million or so people live, or four and a half million, five million people, I'll get it out sooner or later, a little over five million people probably live in the Piedmont area of Georgia. So basically half of the population lives in that central section or that middle section of the state. Um, because of that, because of the population, uh, that's where we find our major cities, Atlanta, Athens, Columbus, Macon, Augusta. And I know I didn't put Columbus in that list, but probably should be. In fact, I know it should be. <clears throat> Somebody asked this morning, why isn't Milledgeville on there? Well, Milledgeville's not a major city. Well, it used to be, you're right. But what happened? They moved the capital. And I'm going to tell you why they moved the capital. Not today, but I am going to tell you why they moved the capital. It's not a good story. I'm just telling you. It's terrible, as a matter of fact. But it happened, so we're going to talk about it. Does she have the Rona? Okay. All right. I hope not. All right. Um, in the Piedmont, we manufacture a lot of stuff. We make stuff in the Piedmont, and we keep it in state. We send it out of state. What do we make in Milledgeville? Not even airplanes. Airplane parts. Okay, and that's that's about it. When, gosh, fifteen years ago, you had an airplane part manufacturer. You had um, an air conditioner, hot water heater manufacturer. You had several textile mills, textile factories. Um, and today, basically what we have left is what used to be Grumman Vault. I don't know what it is now. I rode by it the other day and can't remember what it was called. It, it's been bought out again, sold to somebody. But that's basically what we do in Milledgeville, and that's hurt us. But the rest of the Piedmont, we have a lot of manufacturing. I put the picture of the Kia Motors uh, plant because it is a huge manufacturing plant near LaGrange, um, West Point, Georgia. Um, if you're driving on the interstate, it takes you about three-quarters of a mile to get past that factory. It is a long, large factory. But we do other stuff too. We don't just make stuff, we raise stuff. Notice I didn't say we grow stuff. 
because we don't grow a lot of stuff in the Piedmont region. We raise a lot of stuff, chickens primarily. Used to be dairy cattle. Used to have a lot of dairy farms, but not so much anymore. In fact, in Oconee County, which is right outside of um, Athens, there is one family-owned dairy that still exists. My um, daughter-in-law's family owns that particular dairy, Hale Farms. Um, it used to be everywhere. It used to be you'd ride down 441 and you would smell them long before you would see them, the cows, because they were everywhere. Why? Because people ran dairies. Um, today, primarily chickens. In fact, Georgia has 159 counties in it. It's a lot of counties. 102 of those produce a million dollars worth of chicken or more per year. That's a lot of chicken. A lot of fried chicken. You think about it, 102 counties with a million, that's $102 million worth of chicken. And it's more than that. Because you got some that are producing several million dollars worth of chicken. Um, hold your hand up for me, Albert. Just like that. Let's see how big that hand is. You got a big hand? That's pretty long fingers. All right. I'm going to do this. Can you do that? Yeah, right there. Okay. Back in the day, when I was your age, that was about the size of an average chicken breast. You go to the store today, and it's normally bigger than my hand. And that's a big hand. Why is that? Thank you. You did a marvelous job. All right. Why is that? University of Georgia and other places, Fort Valley State, um, other places are doing research with chickens, and they're figuring out ways to grow them bigger. And so um, as a result, people are bigger. I'm not talking fat. I'm just talking about big. You know, people are taller. I use this example back when I was your age and watching high school football or college football, rather, a, a lineman, a big lineman, would be about 250, 270 pounds. Today, add 100 pounds to that. Yeah, they grow. They do. Well, our middle schoolers don't, but, you know, everybody else's grows. Ours don't grow. Um, and again, some of that's because of the, uh, the research that's been done, what chickens are fed. Um, there's can be um, steroids put into our food supply um, because it makes the animals bigger. We can get more meat from them. Again, you know, that size chicken breast compared to, yeah, that size chicken breast. Got the claw going on. Ah! Um, so again, 102 counties out of 159 produce a million dollars worth of chicken a year. That's a lot of chickens. Your three chickens aren't a drop in the bucket. Um, in some cases, yeah, unless you buy organic stuff, you're, it's probably going to have... Mm-hmm. It's not the same kind of steroids. Yeah. Not the kind that makes you go into a rage. Yeah. All right. So um, another thing about the Piedmont region is it's very rocky. And the reason it's very rocky is primarily because of Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain is just a big rock sitting on the face of the earth. It's the world's largest outcropping of granite. And outcropping means it's exposed rock. Um, you ever heard the expression, the tip of the iceberg? Well, Stone Mountain is the tip of the iceberg. The Piedmont region is basically, at least underneath the ground, underneath the surface of the, of the earth, is Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain covers a lot of the Piedmont. Um, and as a result, it's hard to dig holes. Um, lightning strikes are pretty prevalent because of the amount of iron in the soil. Um, so you definitely don't want to be outside during lightning strikes. Um, 
really bad idea to touch a yeah. You know, so y'all did y'all hear about the kid in um from Stratford that got struck by lightning back in early July? Um Stratford's school in Macon. They uh they were down in near Miami and for some reason he was out on the beach during a storm, got struck by lightning, died um I think the twenty eighth. But anyway. Um, his family asked us to come or asked us to bring a color guard and, and present the colors at his funeral. And so we did, and it was eerie. We were sitting there, the funeral hadn't started yet. We were getting ready, and a thunderstorm comes through. And there is light now. I mean, I can see it, just, you know, those bolts that go across the sky. And then right before the family was about to walk in, the lights went out. They came right back on, but I'm thinking, how awful is this? It was. It was sad. I mean, it was a it was a hopeful kind of message, and but it was still sad. Anyway, um, Elberton. So the key there is don't go outside when it's lightning. Run. Get the cover. Okay. Do not grab hold of metal poles. You know. Um, Elberton, which is in Elbert County, right up here, just a little bit. Um, northwest of at northeast of Athens, rather towards South Carolina, that's the granite capital of the world, um, and that's Elberton. Elberton's right here, and Stone Mountain is right here. So you can see, I mean, Stone Mountain literally is underneath the ground. Um, it's the same granite, and. Of course, Elbert County takes it out of the ground and sells it all over the world. Building material, headstones, um, a lot of different things. All right. Um, the Coastal Plain, that's our last of the five regions. Um, it is the largest in Georgia. It takes up about three-fifths of the land mass. So if you want to know how big it is, multiply uh, 53,715 by three-fifths and you will get the area of the coastal plain. We actually divide it into two. We have the inner coastal plain and the outer coastal plain. And if you look at the little picture down here on the right, it says coastal upper and lower. Um, just know this. The green is the inner. It's closer to the fall line. The yellow is the outer. It's closer to the ocean. So we could technically say there are six regions um, in Georgia, but in reality, there are five. Uh, we just divide this one into two. All right? Boop. So how many of you have ever heard of the idea of Iowa and Nebraska and Kansas being the nation's breadbasket? Okay. Okay. We can take that same idea and apply it to Georgia. And the intercoastal plain is our breadbasket. It's the agricultural heartland. If, if it's grown in Georgia, it's going to be grown in the coastal region, the intercoastal plain. Um, that's where we grow peaches and cotton, um, Vidalia onions, peanuts, soybeans cantaloupe, watermelons, um, just about anything that we grow, we're going to grow in this part of the of the state because of the soil. It's very rich in nutrients. Students in 6th, 7th, or high schooler that has not had their picture made, please report to room 333 at this time. Any sixth or 7th graders that have not had their picture taken, Please report to room 333 at this time. Okay. Thank you. We're actually going after this class. We're just going to leave our stuff, walk up, get our picture made, and go to drill. And then it'll be time to go home. All right. Um, Vidalia onions are, are kind of interesting. Um they are only grown in Georgia, and they're only grown within a certain radius of Vidalia, Georgia. Um, they're just sweet onions, but because of the soil composition, um, they have a, a, a different taste, a unique taste when compared to others. And 
Um, if you sell something as a Vidalia onion, there's a little sticker that has to be on it that certifies it is from Georgia and it indeed is a Vidalia onion. Peanuts are not, are they nuts? Are peanuts nuts? No, they're not. They're, a, they're basically a root. They grow underground. Mm, a little bit, maybe. They are a plant. All right. The outer coastal plain, it's where we find Georgia's oldest city. That's Savannah. Not only is it Georgia's oldest city, it's its first city. It's been in existence since three. Um, and because of where it's located, it is a major port on the eastern coast of the United States. Um, even though it's not right on the ocean, it's about 15 miles up the Savannah River. Um, there are a lot of pine trees in the coastal plain, in the outer coastal plain. Those trees were used for naval stores. Now, you might ask, what's a naval store? Is that where you go buy a belly button ring for your belly button? Because you had it, your navel pierced? No. Is it where you go buy Navy stuff? No. Naval stores are basically materials that are taken from or extracted from the southern pine tree and the southern pine forest. In the 18th and 19th century, what were ships made of? Not metal. Wood. And if I boarded a ship in London and sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, uh, by the time I got there, I, my ship was going to have some problems. If I ran into a storm, it might have storm damage. If I hit a whale, I'm going to have some kind of damage. Um, it, just because of the fact that it's a wooden sailing ship and I'm on the ocean, um, I might have some leaks. So I get to the East Coast and I'm able to repair my ship using materials taken from the pine forest, from the southern pine forest. Things like lumber. Uh, when the railroad started, these um, pine forests supplied railroad ties. Those uh, big wooden timbers that railroad track actually sits on. Um, rosin. It's just a drying agent. If you've ever watched a baseball game, pitcher's got a bag of stuff sitting on the mound. That's a rosin bag. It helps dry his hand so he can grip the ball. And then turpentine, sap out of a pine tree. It's used for a lot of different things. So by the early 20th century, Georgia is the world's leading producer of naval stores. If you had a wooden ship and you needed it to be fixed, you were going to use stuff that probably came out of Georgia. Or if you wanted to build a new ship, you might use stuff that came out of Georgia. So the southern pine um, really is a, a, an incredible resource for uh, Georgia in its early days. Uh, today, those trees, those pine trees are used to make paper, cardboard, anything that is a paper product. Um, kind of a neat story that has to do with Milledgeville and one of its native sons. Um, in one of GMC's first graduating classes, there was a man named, or a young young man named Charles Hurdy, H-E-R-T-Y. He left here, he went to the University of Georgia, graduated from there, went to Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, Maryland, got his PhD in chemistry, came back to Georgia, taught at the University of Georgia. Georgia needed a mediocre football team, and so he... Uh, the football team at the University of Georgia. Um, so he's the father of Georgia football. But more importantly, he did research into how to use the southern pine. And he discovered a way to use the turpentine to take the turpentine out, the sap out, without killing the tree. And that was important because it truly made the southern pine forest a renewable resource. Um, right before his death, he created a way to use southern pine pulp to make paper. Again, nobody had ever done it. And so paper becomes much cheaper because it's a lot 
less expensive than um, what paper had been made out of before, cloth and hardwood. Uh, today, tourism, shipping, and seafood are important um, industries in the outer coastal plain. If you've ever been to the beach in Georgia, wow, you have been, everybody awake now? You have been, I'll get it for you, Caroline. You have been um, in the outer coastal plain. Was that yours? It was Ella's. Well, I'm not getting it then. Just kidding. All right, so tomorrow, um, this is what you got. Listen, you should have already been looking at it. Um, You have those 10 connecting themes. And this is exactly how it's going to be presented to you. You're going to have um, basically a definition, okay? On one side, the other side, you're going to have those 10 connecting themes. You basically have to match, you know, put the letter for the right one over here. Um, And you've also got those facts and figures. Those facts and figures are going to be filling the blank with a word bank. The connecting themes. There's 10 connecting things in conflict or conflict and change, uh, um, technological um, innovation, location, those things. Okay. Um, so it's, it's pretty simple. Um, if you study, you'll be fine. If you don't study, you ain't going to be fine. I'm going to get a call from mama. And I'm just going to have to tell them, they didn't study. So make sure you study. Um, hopefully you've already studied. You've looked at it a little bit. Because one thing you're going to learn is I'm not kidding when I say, go home, review your notes every night. That saves you a lot of heartache. Um, saves you a lot of time. So make sure you're, you're doing that. All right, any questions? Uh, when we leave here, Make sure you got your tie if you brought one with you. If not, there'll be one upstairs. Um, And we're going to line up outside of room 333, okay? So do not go to your locker unless you need to get your tie. But even then, there's probably one up there. You can just leave them right here, okay?